What is up guys and welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included. So, today, uh, I want to let you guys know right off the bat that I tried to do a recording and I guess I just didn't hit record or something. Uh, but, it, I recorded like 10 minutes worth of footage, but I did like 2 hours worth of work. So there's a little bit of stuff that I've done off camera technically that I didn't get. Um, everything's not loaded yet, so let me pause for a second. There we go, calories are back up, numbers are going back up, there we go, there it is. Alright, so first of all, I did uh, get my first Dre Dreco's, my Glossy Dreco's. Uh, looks like I have Glossy Dreco's hatching down here too, which is good. Got another Glossy Dreco egg here, and as they start to build up, they'll start moving more up here, so I'll have plenty of room for like, I think I have it set up for six each, so that's... 18 glossy dracos producing i don't know how much for uh i think every three cycles they uh harvest for more plastic so we'll probably even double this so that way we have twice the amount uh so we've already got 300 kilograms of plastic and that number will just continue to rise and the printing pod actually uh gives me the option to print plastic as well we're pretty good on food right now so i'd rather have plastic so let me scroll through here a little bit maybe i saw it the other day i saw it for a very brief moment so now that we're getting plastic we can actually print it which will help us get started because that means we can finally make our steam turbine the steam turbine would be incredibly useful for making a massive cooling loop we can cool the entire base off of ah just at it dang it Too busy talking and get caught up with it but yeah we can build a massive cooling loop that we can cool the entire base with even cool off some of the geysers to get more resources which would be incredibly useful there it is 500 kilograms nice so now we got 800 kilograms once that updates almost a ton of plastic which is awesome which should be more than enough if i were to check to make the steam turbine yes okay it's go time now okay so i'm thinking what we'll do is oh yeah i built these water tanks by the way and i moved all the fluids from inside of our base into these tanks i have a little bit of our pure water down in here so that way we can access it for the food farms inside the base which we're probably going to move down here to be honest just because it'd be a little more convenient to have uh, our food farms all in one place in fact let's go ahead and queue that up um, I want to go ahead and deconstruct these air pipes. And just for, you know, checking stuff's sake, they're not even hooked up to anything. Yeah, let's just deconstruct those. Oh, hopefully. Oh, yeah, hold on. Uh, cancel. Yeah, electric wires. Check. Okay. And then we will queue up a build down here. Once somebody comes over here and deconstructs that one. Alright. And we're going to switch to hydroponic farms. Just so that way I can water them a little bit easier. Identical build right below. Right there. I got our food production all in one place. Oh, that's because I had a storage in there. 
Okay, and then go ahead and let them start building this stuff. Okay, and that'll give us two brand new farms to set up, and we need to hook up the lights to it, obviously, because we're going to cook some berries. Unless we want to cook something else. What are our options when it comes to a food plant? Um, well, let's just take a look at that, actually. It is a good bit of information to want to find out. Um, let me see. Uh, let's just slap down a planter box real quick. Uh, a food tile, I should say. Uh, right there. Get somebody over here to build that real quick. There we go. Let's take a look at our options. Obviously, there's millwood, which we don't want to do. Because right now, I'm using millwood to feed my Drekos, and honestly, I don't want to mess with it. Let's look, uh, blossom seeds are what we're doing. Nosh beans, I've never messed with those, nor do I have any nosh beans, so I don't even know what they're good for. They drop nosh beans, I don't know how good that is. Then we got sleet wheat, which I know makes a really good food source, but you have to have it really cold. Like, at, at most, 41 degrees Fahrenheit, which is not going to be impossible. I'm building a cooling loop, and if I, ran a, if I used uh, the cold water from my cooling loop in here, we could grow sleet wheat without any problem. All we do is use radiant pipes rather than regular pipes in this room, and then insulate it around it, and we'd be able to run cold uh, plants through here and grow sleet wheat. The only problem is, is we'd run the risk of having hypothermia in the base, and that'd be kind of dangerous. It's also fungal spores, which they have to be in an atmosphere of carbon dioxide. Not too difficult. Temperature is pretty easy. Can't have any light, which wouldn't be an issue because, you know, all of the rooms are dark. Um, in the back. Oh, we do have materials overlay. I didn't know that was actually a thing. A light overlay. Yeah, see? No light. So that wouldn't be too difficult, but uh, fried mushrooms is no better than uh, bristleberries. Uh, and then we got... Uh, the pinch of peppermint, which requires phosphorite. We are getting phosphorite, so we could technically grow that. Um, we'd have to grow it upside down, though, so we'd have to change the whole layout. Um, why is cooked fish not in here? Like, for real. Why was that not in the frost buns? Why aren't they in here? Jeez, but, uh, quality, oh, okay, frost buns are times two, well, that's pretty good. Barbecue is times three, obviously that's not something we can mass produce real easily at the beginning of the game. Because we're still feel, we're still really early game. Uh, omelets are plus two, fried mushrooms are only plus one. So yeah, doing the mushrooms would not be a great choice, we might we'd be better off just sticking with the berries. Granted, you get a little more from the fried mushrooms than you do from the berries, but still. I would not mind doing the frost buns. The fried meats aren't super great. Omelets obviously are not something we can reproduce super easy until we get a lot of animals. So that'll have to wait as well. And it's going to be hard to kind of automate what eggs go into the cooker and what don't. I guess one way you could do it is you could set the grill to a lower priority or the egg cracker to a lower priority than setting up incubators so that way the incubators get filled first and then the rest of the eggs just get cracked but we may do that just so that way we have a source of omelets but i'm really kind of digging the idea of doing frost buns now that we got this uh, those two those two or three new things queued up we'll be able to make frost a bunch of frost buns without issue um so i'm gonna wait to deconstruct any of our old farms up here and we are going to see about setting this up with our cooling loop. So, let's go ahead and get started on that cooling loop, okay? So, our best bet is first we need to make a chamber for the cooling loop. I'm going to say right down here in this area. First thing we need to do is... Insulated tiles, and we want this out of some good material. So, we're going to use uh, ceramic. We have a pretty good chunk of this, but we'll probably burn through it real quick. Not the button, I mean the head. <clears throat> Alright. Start off with a base layer of ceramic here. And we're out of ceramic. That was quick. Okay, let's queue up some ceramic then. Forever. 
forever. Forever. Problem is, I don't think I have enough coal. Okay. Actually, we're, we're pretty good on coal right now. Don't know where we got all the coal, but we got it. Uh, I want to turn the priority of our uh, coal generators down. Well, we should anyway. Looks like they're prioritizing the wheels right now, so something might be okay. Alright, that's fine for now. We'll let the coal generators just run. As I have four coal generators and four wood burning generators now that we've got uh, a wood farm, which I moved over here underneath the pumps. I haven't really gone over these pumps that much. But uh, I have filters set up through all of these. And before they're even allowed to come into any of these tanks, they have to go through my new new water cleaning system. It's I switched out the air one for the water one because we really just did not need the water purification system. Uh, so I have... Uh, any liquid I pump into the base has to go through here, which I've actually ran a pipe throughout the entirety of the base. Basically, anything that goes into this pipe will get sorted into our liquid storage. So, uh, and I also upgraded this setup. I keep putting ice tiles in these temp shift plates. I put one ice tile to help keep it cool in these rooms. And eventually it melts. And when it melts, I decided to go ahead and put these mesh tiles so that way it can just flow downward and get to this pump. And then I have this pump just pumping straight into our liquid storage so that we can hang on to the water. I don't want to waste it, right? <sighs> whoa, 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 whoa. Why are you guys trying to wrangle these? Oh. Glossy Dracos and Draclets. Alright, let's fix. Yeah, I'm trying to. Well, I want. need. I need my Dracos in the farms. Okay, we're just gonna stop with the Dracos in general. Go ahead and do attack command and attack the let's see here. Draco attack Draco attack. I just wanna kill off the old Dracos. We're we're done with them anyway. We don't need them to reproduce. From these guys. There we go. Now all we have are the glossies. Alright, I want to do a sweep command on their, their bases. The bases we can. There we go. I also want to get out any old materials. There we go. That'll do it. He says. Mealwise doesn't have storage. That's fine. I, I want them to believe in Mealwise anyway. Everything else that I want to get out. Ooh, we can put out some more plastic. Probably gonna need it. There it is. Sweet. Now we're up to a ton and almost a half. Awesome. Okay. How's that ceramic coming? Set these to a higher priority. Why is that coming? Hook it up with uh, I know this isn't an emergency what I'm doing with this, but I want them to get it down quickly. And their stress levels stay down pretty low now that they have the Atmos suits. Thermal properties of all our fluids, though. Uh, properties. Thermal capacity, 0.338. 2.3. Oh, that was kind of good. I was looking at. Capacity is 2.278 and 0.338. 
2.322. Freeze point's kind of important too. Yeah, they freeze really high up. Uh, yeah, polluted water so far is my best liquid for that. But we are definitely going to utilize this guy for water. He gives us loads. Uh, probably melt off a lot of the ice biome and use it for water. Uh, we're obviously going to look for any more pockets of water, like this salt water up here. And uh, another cool steam vent right there that we can utilize. I uh, plan on cooling down our copper volcano here to get loads of metal. They already had it analyzed so we can understand everything about it, which is awesome. Um, and yeah, it didn't affect the insulation at all. I think it was at 100 degrees. It's it's went off multiple times. It's still barely 110, so I'm not too worried there. Um, but yes, we are going to get down here and we're going to start building this crap. Alright. Don't need an emergency priority anymore. Alright, we have a little bit more, so let's go ahead and finish building that. Okay. Alright, I want to make sure I'm doing this right, so I'm going to look at a couple of setups online to make sure I build the best possible setup. Alright guys, so I have a basic setup right here. So basically the steam turbine is going to sit on top of this. Um, hold on, I'm going to fix one thing. Okay. So the vent's going to go right there. We got, we're trying to build, I'm trying to build everything out of ceramic so it has a high overheat temperature. I don't want to, I don't want anything like melting in here. Um, something we will have to do though is from here we need to use the loop that we're creating. Um, right, let's go ahead and cancel that. That. Uh, right, I'm gonna let them build this because we're gonna need more ceramic to actually queue up anything else. So I'm gonna let them get started on all this. There we go. This is going to be our cooling setup. Once we have the room set up, I need before I actually build that, I actually want to build a gas pump in here so I can pump out all the gases. Cuz it needs to be it needs to have no gases in here. And now we can build the high pressure uh, stuff here so I don't have to worry about over pressure. Um, that's the wire. Run it from there over to red there so nice having resources actually being able to build shit's nice okay and I need to build the setup so I need to set up a liquid shutoff yeah this guy right here To properly get this going, we're going to deconstruct the set of ladders. <clears throat> right there. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a liquid shutoff. here and then what we're going to do is we're going to run our pipes once we have more ceramic which we have a little bit more now we're going to run the pipes through here it's going to come up through right here and we're going to put a thermal sensor right there with some automation wire hook that up and if it's able to run out, oh, I shouldn't be building this stuff out here out of ceramic. I should be building this stuff out of fully. I guess rock or something. It's not going to be that hot out here. And if it's cool enough, I'm going to run it back down here. Cool off the steam turbine. steel just to make sure it don't get too hot <laughs> oh 
we're gonna use polluted water since its freezing point is like below zero, way below zero. Uh, we'll be able to get down to like negative like 20 degrees on these things and be able to really cool shit down really well. All right, we're gonna cool it off like that, and then we'll switch back to these pipes. Um, okay, so we need to have one more ceramic pipe right here. We need to have a liquid bridge made out of ceramic also right there and then we're gonna go with regular insulated pipes from here with uh, igneous rock run it out here we're gonna do a liquid bridge doesn't really matter if it's with ceramic or not but just in case I'm gonna make this one ceramic since it's gonna be going over the top of this bad boy all right back to this and that's where it'll run through the cooling loop. If it's cool enough, it'll go through here and cool off the steam turbine. That'll be number one priority is keeping this cool. Because if it's not cool, it'll overheat and then we'll have problems. From there though, uh, if it's not cool enough, I want to go a loop back into the system. Go down one, liquid bridge, right here. Well, I actually want the loop to have priority, so we're actually going to cancel that. We're going to rewire this. Uh, 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 oh, I need to build some ladders so they can actually reach all this stuff. Right here. Okay. Um, Alright, we'll run the primary cooling loop right through there. So this way we can put this guy right here, we can run this guy, run the primary loop down through here. Right here is where the primary loop is going to run, so we'll go ahead and connect that up to the thing. But cancel right, really, y'all building too fast, stop it. Normally I wouldn't complain, but damn. I want the loop itself to have priority because otherwise it'll get clogged up. So we're going to deconstruct right there. Okay. Alright, uh, let's deconstruct one more actually. Yeah, let's deconstruct that guy. And then we're going to run from this guy into this primary system. And then we're gonna set up this guy. Needs to be one space back so the other one will have priority. No, it needs to go in, yeah, right here. Yeah, right there is where it needs to go. And then we can connect that back up, connect that back up. And there, once they have that built, it'll prioritize the loop It'll prioritize the loop right here over everything else. So it'll make sure everything here is cooled off. Alright, and I want the water... Uh, what is the lowest temperature this can be again? Uh, the freezing point of this is... Negative 5. So I say we set it to... because I say we set it to... Below... It'll send a green signal only if it is below... Let's say 10 degrees. That way we have some wiggle room. So even if it... Say it's at 11 degrees and it goes down 14. Which actually, how many degrees does this bring down? This will... Negative 25 degrees. As I was thinking of Celsius. Okay, in that case, we might want to be a little more careful. Let's say below... 15 degrees. If it's below 15 degrees, that's a good temperature. Let's say 20. Just to be safe. There we go. That'll give us wiggle room. Uh, 25. That, because I want to be very careful, because I don't want to freeze the liquid. As if it lowers it by 25 degrees, if it's exactly like 25.1 and it goes down 25 degrees, that'll put it at uh, zero, which is fine. Okay. All right, and we also need to hook up power to that bad boy. Let them get back to work. 
Um, we'll just hook it up to the main vein. There we go. We'll obviously have to have some power and liquid to kick it off. So we'll probably hook this up to something. Um, we don't want to use this wire that much, but we're going to. Should be using copper, seeing as I'm about to have an infinite amount of copper. Alright, deconstruct these power wires right here. Then if somebody's ready to. There you go. Attaboy. Alright. Let me grab this. Probably gonna deconstruct this desalinator anyway. It really don't matter if that thing's power. Okay, let's we'll hook it up like that. And that'll give us power temporarily, so that way we can kickstart the whole process here. <clears throat> okay. I'm trying to think, is there anything I'm missing? Oh yeah, well I have to figure out where the liquid's going afterwards. Okay, so the way I want to do this, is I want to set up a body of water. Uh, probably right here above it. For specifically cooling. I don't want it to be used for anything else. So what we'll do is we'll do insulated tiles right here above the whole setup. Like that doors down below. Okay, they should be able to build that no issue. Let's go. I knew you were going to do that. I looked up and I saw that and I saw it coming. Really stupid. Okay, we also need them to be able to get up and down. putting polluted water in here so there's no point of creating a vacuum the gases that are in here are fine to be in here I really don't care that much but what we want is this is where I'm gonna set up my cooling okay we're gonna set up the primary uh, pump right here to pump water out of the cooling loop and I really don't care what this is made of all right and this is where we'll pump out for our cooling loop itself Right here. Um, and anything we connect this to is what's going to be cooling down. And in here, I want this. Uh, we need to fill it up with liquid, obviously. So we're going to put that up there. Put that up. And we will just fill some of this cooling water for a bit. Let's fill some of this polluted water and start filling this up. I can turn this back on. Alright, and that'll get us a bunch of polluted water in here that we can use to build our cooling loop. Now, the cooling power that we're getting... Um, I want it to prioritize, go through the loop if it can, uh, get out through here. Then once it's done cooling off the steam turbine, I want it to go back around over here. Go up liquid bridge over and up through here um, I want to put metal tiles down actually there we go we got liquid coming in which is awesome let's build some metal tiles out of iron
Okay, let's rework this a little bit. Give me just a second. All right, guys. I think I have the cooling loop all planned out here. So, I'm going to let them finish building everything here. I got metal tiles laced around the entire outside perimeter of it, so it's going to completely chill the inside. The inside of this is going to be, like, cold as fuck. And it will chill the inside of this. Now, if it starts becoming too cold, we'll have to reduce the radiant pipes and get it a little bit warmer. Hopefully, the loop itself will be warming up enough that I want to work on it. I'm going to put a bunch of polluted water in here. I need a ton of it. So we're going to probably use the majority of the polluted water we've got. That's why I have to get some more, but that's not that big a deal. like the only thing they haven't built yet was the remainder of these high conductive wires. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and cancel from here over. So that way they will only build these. Okay, um, I need to look because I assume this is a skill thing. Skill operation errands. Alright, Herald and Nails. Need to have that skill. Harold or Nails? Nails is. She's got plenty of morale, assuming I even I'm close to it. Probably electrical engineer or something. Um, yeah, that's Nails, right? Well, that have Harold. Neither one of them know the skill. What is the skill? Somebody built it. That is properties. Okay, guys, I think it is 100% ready to get started and get looping. I've never done this before, so I'm a little nervous that I've fucked it up somehow. But let's go ahead and give this a shot. So all we have to do is first pump in some water. So I need them to come build that pipe at an emergency place. Has that door. There's no one gonna build it. Okay. It is built. And I'm gonna turn the pump on. Start running water into the system. We want roughly two tiles full of regular water in here. So I wanna see it start pumping in. I also want to clean out these rooms real quick because we don't want all these materials in here. First thing I'd like to test out my cooling loop with is probably this hydrogen actually because if we automate the clearing of this hydrogen uh, we can uh, get the hydrogen nice and cool and then we can use that hydrogen to power hydrogen generators which would be really really handy so I think I'm still gonna build the, the generator setup right here above these And having a hydrogen generator, especially this close to a hydrogen vent that I can produce loads of cooled off hydrogen with, would be very useful. This produces hydrogen, I think, almost a thousand degrees. If I build the stuff inside of it, I still should be Okay, we got I mean, two tons of liquid per tile. So we went a little overboard, but we got it all set up. So now it's all ready. All I have to do is just start cooling off the water in the aquifer. OK. 
Okay, so let's start running the loop somewhere. Um, but we need to hook up water to the loop so that way it stays nice and cool. So, we need to pump in some fluid and I think we're planning on using polluted water for this purpose. So, we could probably get away with just Be careful not to overfill the loop either. Okay, let's go ahead and stop it there. Let's Let's just go ahead and disconnect this all together for now. Have a major priority. We might come disconnect that bridge. Do it quickly, please, so. Oh shit, I never set this. Below uh twenty-five. Passing it all together. Send a green signal. Did I not ever hook up the automation wire to that? I did. Send a green signal if it's above 25. Sorry. at that it is going down causing that water to cool dramatically we got addle dupes which i need to deal with this is starting to get hot hotter. the water is separated out a little bit which is kind of worrisome i think i need to add one more to the loop some more to the loop. Let's put that bridge back so I can delete it if I need to. Oh, I do need to deconstruct that. Uh, liquid pipes right here. Thank you. I don't want it dropping the water into the system because that would just defeat the purpose. I also want to exchange that with a radium pipe. I don't know why it's not. And I don't understand why that one is.
쓸레기라고 해야 되나? probably because I don't have a bridge anymore. Alright, well since you want to be a D-bag about it. in here is looking pretty good. Almost up to 100 degrees down here. Like I said, this is the first time I've ever done this, so I want to make sure I'm doing it, you know, 100% right. These pipes can hold more than normal because I have the high pressure mod on, so these pipes can hold 4 kilograms per pipe, so... I just need to make sure that this loop right here doesn't get overfilled. Seems to be working pretty well, though. I want to disconnect this pipe right here, though. Yep, we're at 100 degrees on the thermal. Oh, shit. Seriously, no power? It's not a good time for that. Really not a good time for that. It's just gonna keep bypassing the aqua tank for now. Okay. Alright, we have more than enough fluid in the loop at this point. So let's deactivate that. And let's see. Let's just deconstruct this pipe right here. No, I probably shouldn't, but we're good. Okay, cool, we didn't make a mess. Okay, and the priority system is working, so the loop just keeps going. Got a lot of fluid to cool, so it's taking a little bit longer than it was before. Getting there, though. So sure it is. What's going on? Uh, plumbing overlay. Oh, it's blue. 
moving down slowly. hook up this automation though. Once it gets below let's say 30 degrees we can start pumping out from this system. Do we have automation wire hooked up? Yes we do. Okay. Where do we want to send the cooling loop? While we're waiting on this we can send it somewhere. Um eventually I want to set up the cooling loop to run to the base and cool everything down. Um, what temperature is our primary water source? It's a bit toasty. Okay. Hmm. Okay, I have an idea then. Let us take one of these thermal sensors, put it in the water, right over here, and we will hook that up to automation wire. Just like that. And we'll set that to, if it's below, let's say, let's say 70 degrees, below 70 degrees. Once this water is below 70 degrees, it can pump, and I can use the same thermal sensor to set up a, a shutoff. Um, let's see here. A liquid shutoff right here. Let's say about right here. So run insulated pipes up through it, and... This thermal sensor will shut this on or off if it is, a, I'll put a not gate, if it's not above and below this, it'll send fluid up to here, yeah, about right here, the radiant pipes will go through right here, yeah, right through there. Down. I want this to have priority, so then I would put a bridge here and connect it back up to right there, and that'll create a cooling loop for my water source. Okay, and I'm getting it over there, so it seems like it might be a challenge. Well, I can deconstruct this whole setup, I don't need it anymore.
that would be the first journey on our coolant loops system. And I'm going to use shutoffs a lot to control the temperature of things. Use shutoffs with thermal sensors, and I'll run the only run the radiant pipes through them if they are above a certain temperature. And that'll create a cooling loop for the entire base. Come on, keep the power going, guys. Why are those old generators not a higher priority? Let's get those going. Come on, I need some, let me get some coal. That's what I want. Oh, shoot. Got some. Spicy tofu. Give me one of the two, damn. There, take spicy tofu. They were duplicating some good food. We gotta get the power generation going. Okay, they got the wood burning generators going now. And a coal generator, so that'll generate some power. Now we can keep this going. We gotta keep this going so it gets hot enough. We got a bunch of lumber, so those wood burning generators can last for the Alright, guys. I actually got my first thing uh, cooling down. That is this hydrogen vent. And this thing says it's supposed to eject heat at like 800 degrees, but I think the temp shift place I put in here really helped with that. I put a thermal sensor down here, so if it gets above 100 degrees, it's going to stop pumping gas. So that way, it'll have time to cool down. And once it gets down back below 100 degrees, this thing will turn on and start pumping it in here, which will pump it to our hydrogen generators that I just set up, which are just are now hooked up to the base. We are now generating power using hydrogen. And with that in mind, I am turning the priority of these down. We now have hydrogen power and pretty soon steam power. This water is at 180 degrees and is like 30 degrees away from the steam, and then we'll have steam generation. Guys, it's so good. We're finally having power. I am not having a power crisis anymore. Next uh, crisis to solve is the oxygen. Thankfully, I found a huge collection of algae that I mined up, which helped a lot. We're about to start setting up the hydroponic farms of water. Ugh, so we're going to have to get more polluted water, though, because my arbor trees can't grow like this, but I'm honestly not too concerned with the arbor trees right now, mostly because I really don't care that much now that we have uh, hydrogen power. Granted, I don't think this will be a permanent uh, source anyway, for a lot of reasons, uh, and I did put a filter on this to keep anything but hydrogen to go in, from going in here. Anything that's not hydrogen just gets in and out. Thank God for plastic. What three freaking tons of this stuff. We got a bunch of pinch rows too, which is really nice, so we're taking care of all of our uh, waste. Unfortunately, I don't think we have a whole lot of waste left to give them. Well, that can't be true, because we have our waste collection system down here. Probably mostly bleach stone and slime then. Slime, 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 slime. Yeah, it's all just slime. So we need to start turning slime into algae. That's what we need to do, at least for a little while. Get rid of some of that slime. Um, take some fried mushrooms. They're not the best, but they're okay. So our food count, it's maintaining for the most part, but I see it trickle down a little bit, and I like to keep an eye on it. <sighs> this is a really good episode, guys. I've been waiting to get into uh, our cooling loops for a while. Now we have hydrogen generation. Pretty soon, I'm going to cool this thing down and get us uh, some other stuff how's the temperature in the water still okay even with this water coming out at probably like 80 degrees or something like that let's see here no it's still coming out like 40 degrees wait how is it coming out colder than it went in okay oh it's because it's crossing this pipe and cooling down 
Wait, I thought that was an insulated pipe there. It's not. Oh, it's because I was looking at the wrong pipe. So, yeah, about 80 degrees, so not too terrible. It's going up slowly because the hydrogen vent is heating up the water. Um, I think I'll have to set up multiple loops so that way I'm not, like, heating up too many things. With our current setup, the water is maintaining up here. The water is a little bit warmer. I may have to set up some temp shift plates. I'll make them out of steel. Okay. All right, I'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, I think this is a good wrapping up point. We've made some pretty good progress. We now have sustainable power and sustainable uh, cooling. And it's awesome. I want to take a look at one thing, though. Has the water gotten hot enough? Almost, oh, it's almost there. Uh, the vaporizing point of water is 210 degrees. It is... Oh, it's there. Oh, it's there. It's about to do the thing. Let's watch this. Come on, do the thing. Vaporize. Let's wait for the water down below to go too. Come on, you're at the uh, boiling point. Do it. Do the thing. Turn into steam. Come on, you're there. You just looked at the properties. Oh, wait. Yeah, 210.8 degrees. Ah, there it goes. It's got to get a little bit hotter first, but it's almost there. Oh, we created steam, guys. I love it. And once, it re and once the steam reaches a certain temperature, we'll be all good. Oh, successfully created steam using the thermal aqua tuner. The thermal aqua tuner can handle up to 600 degrees. This will never get above 300. It'll cool this down and it'll send the water back down at about 95 degrees and keep repeating the process over and over and over. And obviously the steam has to be the water first. So let's get it to like 250 degrees. This was a little bit longer of an episode and I'm sorry about that guys. Uh, there was just so much I wanted to do and I'm so glad we did it. We finally got this place all set up. That is some scorching hot steam. I love it. It's going to get even hotter once it reaches 257 degrees. This thing will kick on, we'll generate power, and we will uh, keep the cooling cycle going. I love everything about this, guys. Ugh. It's a long time coming, too. And I want to take a look. I put... These took forever, by the way. Getting all that steel together took forever. But the water is cooling down. It is now at 65 degrees rather than 70. And the water coming in is uh, not hot enough, or at least not in a bulk enough state to cause, cause this not to stay cool. This room is warming up a little bit, but it looks like the radiant pipes are doing their job and keeping it below 100 degrees, which is what I want. And we are getting a surplus of hydrogen. Look at that, it's building up the pipes. That is two tons of hydrogen per pipe. So it's loads of hydrogen. It keeps building up more and more and more. Eventually we're gonna get overflowed and we won't have any place to store it, which is fine. I'd rather have too much than too little. Eventually this will refresh and we'll only send out hydrogen when we need it. We may even have to set up another set of hydrogen generators just to keep it up. Which is awesome! That is sustainable, renewable power. This is keeping the system running while the steam turbine is getting ready to kick up and we'll have even more power! Can you believe that guys? We are, oh, we're generating more power than we can use now. It is so good. It is so freaking good. Take some omelets here. Oh, and then we're gonna start running the cooling loop through the base here soon. I wanna get this down to about 
50-ish degrees. In fact, let's go ahead. Why is that set to 100? I want this below 50. There. I want the cooling loop to stop until that gets below 50 degrees. Because I've been trying to cool off this water for a while and the water's just not cold enough. Like, the, I put metal tile in here with temp shift plates around it and it's still having no effect. So, I want to see if getting the water down really, really cold will make a difference. But, I gotta wrap it up here, guys. If you've enjoyed this video, obviously give it a big old thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Click on the bell down below to let you know when I upload videos to YouTube. Uh, ooh, we are out of water out here. It's probably gonna be a problem. We should probably rectify that soon. Yeah. Okay. But, anyway, guys. We'll worry about that in the next episode. We've already made great progress this episode. I'm so happy about it. Steam turbine, liquid cooling loop, water storages, which we got to get more polluted water, uh, which I'm sure we'll find plenty of. Look, there's a whole other body right there we haven't even touched yet. And I think next episode we'll go back to doing exploration now that we have sustainable power and cooling. I'm going to make sure to I'm gonna hook up my cooling loop throughout the base, probably rework some of the base here. We'll probably start making comfy beds now that we have plastic. Uh, how much uh, furniture, comfy bed requires... 200 plastic per so for 20 total beds we'd be looking at uh 4, plastic which we just got no five is a thousand times four yeah it'd be four thousand yeah four thousand plastic which we just obtained so we could literally switch out the whole room layouts right now with comfy beds and improve, improve the morale a ton we also need to make sure our duplicates are keeping busy i've been having them build things here and there uh, but outside of that, they really haven't had much to do, and we got to get the cooling loop going because our base is getting a little toasty in places, especially up here in the top. We're going to deconstruct all the stuff inside of the base that keeps it hot, aside from this stuff, obviously. We're going to replace these weeze warts with a proper cooling setup, and i got to be careful down here because that's starting to heat up down there. Um, we're going to have a proper cooling loop in here, and uh, yeah, I I'm super stoked, guys. Like We've made great progress here. And I can see it's making a lot. Um, I still don't understand why this is not cool. Like, the metal tiles haven't changed temperature at all because that's what temperature of the water is at. And I don't understand why it's not. But this is slowly, slowly, slowly getting colder. Once it gets down to below 50 degrees, the cooling loop will cool down things. Below. Look at all that hydrogen. Ah, it's beautiful. It needs to hurry up and get down below 50 degrees so I can run this again. That hydrogen actually isn't getting too hot. It's probably because of the temp shift place. It's probably redistributing. It is slowly getting hotter, so I need to watch out for that because I don't know. Properties. Melting point 4,000. No, we're good. Oh, yeah. They're made out of steel, so we're good. I ain't got to worry about that. Okay. Alright, but guys, that's gonna have to do it for me, so I'll see all of your beautiful faces in the next video. Bye, guys.